This presentation is a summary of a review paper of the most recent developments in human genetics research in autism spectrum disorder. We are a team of six researchers who came together to write the review and made equal contributions to the work. Three of us will present the, pain, the main points of our review, myself, Alexandra Havdal, and Maria Nyarhu, and Anna Starnavska. Uh, Kanner defined autism in 1943 with detailed case descriptions of children showing social aloofness, communication impairments, and stereotyped behaviors and interests, often accompanied by intellectual disability. A year later, Asperger independently published an article on children presenting marked difficulties in social communication and repetitive behavior patterns, despite having advanced intellectual and language skills. It was only three decades later that Wing and Gold united Asperger and Kanner's descriptions and conceptualized a spectrum of autistic conditions. It's worth highlighting that a woman named Grunia Sukareva published a paper describing autism in 1925, two decades before Kanner and Asperger, but seems to have been forgotten. The core defining features of autism remains early childhood onset impairments in communication and social interaction alongside restricted and repetitive behaviors and interests. There's a wide variability in core symptoms, language level, intellectual functioning, and co-occurring difficulties and conditions. Prevalence estimates of autism have steadily increased from less than 0.4% in the 1970s to current estimates of 1 to 2 percent. The increase is largely explained by broadening diagnostic criteria to individuals without intellectual disability and milder impairments and not environmental factors. There are marked sex and gender differences in autism. The male to female ratio is approximately 4 to 1 in clinical and health registry cohorts, but closer to 3 to 1 in general population studies with active case finding. The mechanisms underlying the sex difference are mostly unknown, and hypotheses include a female protective effect, prenatal steroid hormone exposure, and social factors like underdiagnosis and misdiagnosis in women. In 1977, the first twin heritability uh, study was published. A recent meta-analysis of seven primary twin studies reported that the heritability estimates range from 64 to 93%. Family studies have found that the relative risk of a child having autism relates to the proportion of shared genome with affected relatives. As you can see here in the graph, the relative risk increases as relatedness increases from half first cousins to full siblings. Early GWASs of autism were underpowered, partly due to overestimating potential effect sizes. Grove and colleagues conducted a large GWAS of autism combining data from over 18,000 autistic individuals and 27,000 non-autistic controls recently. And they identified five independent GWAS, GWAS loci. Another recent study identified the further novel locus by meta-analyzing results from Grove et al. with the SPARC cohort. The sample sizes are still relatively small compared to other psychiatric conditions such as schizophrenia or depression, and ongoing work aims to double the sample size. Using genetic correlations and polygenic score analysis, studies have identified shared genetics between autism and different definitions of autistic traits in the general, general population. These methods have also identified polygenic associations between autism and other neurodevelopmental and mental conditions, uh, such as schizophrenia, ADHD, major depression disorder, uh, and related traits like neuroticism, tiredness, and self-harm, as well as risk of exposure to childhood maltreatment and other stressful life events. Notably, autism is genetically correlated with higher intelligence and educational attainment, unlike many other psychiatric disorders. Polygenic transmission disequilibrium tests, or PTDT, have identified an overtransmission of polygenic scores from parents to autistic children. PTDT is a family design which is robust to population stratification and several other factors which may bias genetic correlations. Uh, and it involves 
comparing an affected child's polygenic score to their unaffected parent's average polygenic score called the mid-parent PRS. The PTDT deviation indicates the average standard deviation difference in PRS in children compared to their parents. Here's an example from Warrior and Baron Cohen study where they found a higher PRS for self-harm, ideation and behavior in autistic children compared to their parents, shown here in red. Whereas this PTDT deviation was not observed for unaffected siblings, here shown in blue. Weiner et al previously reported evidence of overtransmission of PRS for autism, schizophrenia, and higher educational attainment to autistic children, uh, but not to their unaffected siblings. And the findings suggest that these genetic correlations are not explained by population stratification or ascertainment related to familial factors. Thank you, Alex. Um, I'll take it from, from there. Um, so uh, rare genetic variants uh, confer significant risk into the complex etiology of autism. They're typically non-Mendelian with substantial effect sizes and low population attributable risk. It is estimated that about 10% of individuals with autism have been diagnosed with an identifiable rare genetic syndrome. And as you can see in the graph, the prevalence of autism in associated syndromes varies widely. On the x-axis are the rare genetic syndromes and on the y-axis is the percentage of patients with the syndrome that are diagnosed with autism. Um, the largest whole exome sequencing analysis to date was conducted by the Autism Sequencing Consortium published in Cell this year. They identified 102 autism-associated genes, which in our review we have mapped to the autosomal chromosomes here in red. In blue are the five SNP names identified in the uh, large genome-wide association study by Grove and colleagues. Uh, notably, KMT2E was implicated in both the largest GWAS and exome sequencing analysis. It is hypothesized that common genetic variation in or near the genes associated with autism influences autism risk, although current sample sizes lack the power to detect the convergence of the two. It's important to note that similar to high genetic correlations found for the common polygenic risk for autism with other neurodevelopmental and neurological traits, autism-associated rare variants are also associated with risk for other conditions, including intellectual disability, schizophrenia, ADHD, and epilepsy. Um, damaging single nucleotide variants, or uh, SNVs, include protein truncating and missense variants. There is substantial case enrichment of the novel protein truncated variants and missense variants, and in total, all exon de novo SNVs explain about 2% of the variants of autism liability. Rare inherited SNVs have a smaller average effect size and reduced penetrance compared to the novel pathogenic mutations, and there is little difference in the overall rate compared with unaffected siblings. A, a lot of rare variant research uh, in autism has focused on copy number variants or CNVs. Uh, they can impact one or multiple genes and can occur at common or rare frequencies in the population. And uh, all CNVs associated with autism have been rare today. Uh, approximately 4 to 10% of individuals with autism have the novel deletions or duplications frequently mapped to established risk loci. A higher global frequency of the novel CNVs is observed in idiopathic autism cases from simplex families compared to multiplex families and controls. Recurrent or inherited CNVs are among the most convincing rare inherited risk variations for autism and are found in 3% of affected individuals. However, inherited CNVs can be present in unaffected siblings and parents, suggesting a model of incomplete penetrance dependent on the dosage sensitivity and function of the genes they affect. Um, common and rare genetic variants uh, associated with autism is related to heterogeneity in intellectual functioning. 
Um, while higher sleep irritability is observed in individuals with autism without intellectual disability, the noble protein truncated variants in constrained genes are enriched in individuals with autism and intellectual disability. However, the genetic architecture of autism is complex and diverse. Um, for example, common genetic variants contribute significantly to risk in individuals with autism and intellectual disability, and in individuals with autism carrying known large effect the novel variants in constrained genes. Also, an excess of disrupted de novo variants is also observed in individuals with autism without co-occurring intellectual disability compared to individuals without autism. And based on the most recent developments uh, in human genetics research in autism, we have updated a pie chart showing the proportions of variants explained in autism liability by different classes of genetic variants. The narrow sense heritability in the different shades of green sums up to 83% being estimated using familiar recurrence data. 12% has been identified as common inherited variants and 3% as rare inherited. 17% of the variance in autism liability is left to be explained by shared and unique environmental estimates, which include non-additive and non-inherited non factors. Identified the novel missense and protein truncated SNVs and variation in non genic regions together explain up to 3% of the variance. Additionally, non additive variation accounts for about 4% of the total variance. Thank you, Maria. As mentioned by my colleagues, both genetic and environmental factors contribute to the risk of autism. DNA methylation, currently the best studied and well understood epigenetic modification, allows for both genetic and environmental factors to modulate a phenotype. DNA methylation affects gene expression, regulatory elements, chromatin structure, and alters neuronal development, functioning, as well as neuronal survival. The largest EWAS of autism was performed in blood in almost 3,000 individuals and did not identify any genome wide significant differentially methylated sites. However, elevated autism PRS was associated with differentially methylated positions in FAM167A gene and RP1L1 gene. The EWAS of autism performed in postmortem brain tissues reported autism related co methylation modules to be significantly enriched in synaptic, neuronal, and immune dysfunction genes. However, these studies were commonly performed on relatively small sample sizes and further, further replication studies are warranted. As opposed to the epigenome-wide association approach, several studies utilized methylation quantitative trait loci approach to explore epigenetic contributions to autism. These studies confirmed that common risk variants of autism identified in work of Crow and co-authors can act as MQTLs also across tissues like blood, fetal brain tissue, and uh, adult brains. Um, through MQTL analysis, also several new genes were associated with autism risk, not identified before by the GWAS approach. Bayesian colocalization analysis confirmed that genetic risk variants of autism are associated with both autism diagnosis and variation in DNA methylation therefore supporting the hypothesis that autism genetic risk variants can act through DNA methylation to mediate the risk of the disorder. As for the transcriptomic studies, gene expression measures play a key role in determining the functional consequences of genes and identifying genetic networks underlying a condition. Whole genome transcriptomic studies have identified several pathways on which different genes associated with autism seem to converge. Three pathways have been consistently reported, the synaptic connectivity and neurotransmitter, chromatin remodeling, and neuronal projection pathways, as visualized on this slide. Recent large-scale and internationally collaborative investigations have led to a better understanding of the genetic contributions to autism and ongoing work is likely to lead to significant advances in the coming years. 
Findings show that the genetic architecture of, complex is, of autism is complex, diverse, and context-dependent, highlighting a need to study the interplay between different types of genetic variants, identify genetic and non-genetic factors influencing their penetrance, and better map the genetic variants to phenotypic heter heterogeneity within autism. Immense collaborative efforts are needed to identify converging and distinct biological mechanisms for autism and subgroups with, within autism, which in, can in turn inform uh, on treatment. It is crucial to invest in multidimensional and longitudinal measurements of both core defining traits and associated traits such as language, intellectual, emotional, and behavioral functioning, and also to establish large omics databases, including genomics, epigenomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, and brain connectomics. Already, large-scale multi-omics investigations are becoming possible in the context of population-based family cohorts with rich prospective measures of environmental exposures and multidimensional developmental trajectories from birth to adulthood. Finally, methods such as Mendelian randomization can help investigate causal molecular pathways between genetic, uh, between genetic variants and autism. We would like to thank you for listening and thank the Psychiatric Genomic Consortium, the Psychiatric Genomic Consortium Working Group for Autism and chairs Elise Robinson and Anna Borlum for the opportunity to write this review and for their support and advice. Thank you.